started a little over 70 years ago, the expectations for kids and frankly for adults with disabilities was extremely limited. People have lived in the community, worked in the community, and done things that they never thought possible in a mere 46 years. The barriers that once existed between the disability community and everyone else are starting to break down at the youngest age. Daliana had come so far because um, at birth she was diagnosed with a brain tumor and then they found 12 additional tumors in her eyes. So they went for five cycles of chemo, two stem cell transplant, three brain surgery. But we always had that hope that she came to this world for something special. We started a journey to find the right place for her where I could feel safe, but also some place that she can be able to learn and move forward. From the very beginning when we bring parents in here, a lot of them are a little hesitant because they feel their children are too young to start in a, in a school program. Once they do come in and they start, in, in just a few months they see changes in them cognitively and physically. And she's happy to be able to go to school. And I'm, Aliana, you ready for school? And she's like, say yes. She pick her own clothes, what she wants to wear. And I put it on, she's like, look how beautiful I look, mom. For Isaiah, to just be able to say, hi, how are you, is really meaningful. He's unable to communicate verbally and use his hands, so he uses an eye gaze system. He has a computer and he basically uses his eyes to make selections, to you know, communicate, to interact socially. He can more independently communicate rather than having relying on someone else to give him choices. It's really improved, I think, his, you know, his, his interactions at school. He seems a lot happier. It really motivates him to learn. We've used the times in which we live, the modern technology, to advance the independence of people with disabilities throughout the country, and in many cases throughout the world. Children and adults can interact with their non-disabled peers, hold jobs, get a better education through the advances in technology in ways that they had never anticipated before. I've been coming here for 14 years now, and it's that really helped me tremendously. They really helped me be more independent with technology. We have walkers, we have keyboards for the visually impaired when they can see bigger keys. We have microwave that talks to you and it really changed people's lives because now for me I can live independently because of this technology. I make custom styluses in a 3D printer. I provide them for veterans, I provide them for amputees, I provide them for people with CP. My company is not part of that. They help me along the way, but my company is very independent. Our partnership with the Whitney Museum of Art is just one example of those things where our folks, through the efforts of some of our staff, help curate art. They give the art, the real art curators at the Whitney some great advice as to how to portray certain paintings in certain, in certain areas so that people with disabilities can experience them the same way that everyone else does. Groups from ADAPT have been coming to have tours at the Whitney Museum for about four or five years. I created my own painting from Andy Warhol on Tuesday. It's good to come to places like this because you see things different, you see different people. They encourage me to do things that i never done before and it's, it's amazing. The more institutions have experience working with the disability community, the more it changes the culture of the institution. Our old building was quite inaccessible and it was really through the work of activism and advocacy through the disability community that the access department was really even established. We're fortunate to sort of have that history and those relationships with the disability community. And it's been a marvelous experience for the Whitney. It's been a marvelous experience for us. And I think it's really important for institutions to partner with these organizations.
Well, I think as a, a state legislator, as an elected official, I have had an opportunity to meet many people who either have disabilities or loved ones who care for those with disabilities. I've been able to really get a good sense of what individuals are experiencing and some of the ways that government and organizations like ADAPT uh, make a difference in their lives. My role is to make sure people know their rights. We have to talk to our legislators and we actually have to get out there and try to help them advocate for themselves. So like places that's not accessible, we try to go to Albany and we speak up for each other. From a legislative angle, it's always great to hear directly from the families that are affected. That is the most effective way to bring about change. I think that's why we've seen such great changes over the last few decades. The more we educate, we go out in the community and we educate, then people actually have a different outlook on even how they speak to us. The word change became very important to us, and so the tagline, We Change, was not so much a brand identity as it was a call to action. We had to change how we did things, change how we worked with people, and to help them live the lives that they wanted to live. For Isaiah, change means he has more opportunities to communicate, interact with people in his environment. I feel like I'm here for a purpose. My dream is to help as many people as possible. As a mother, the feeling that, that you want to get is that your children, it doesn't matter what disability they have, they're in a place that they are happy.